For cheap and reliable coins, check out buyultimateteam.com. Use the code CURTIS for 10% off. Check the link in the description. Got on YouTube, it's your boy, Curtis 7 United have just drew 2 all with West Brom at the Hawthorns in a game of two halves, shall you say? Um, well, not even two halves, because let's be honest, lads. We dominated from start to finish. West Brom had two chances on goal and scored two goals. Two, two brilliant goals, to say the least. Um, that's why I'm not upset. I don't know why. Again, lads, we have not picked up all three points, but I'm not that upset. Don't ask me why. I think it's down to a few factors. I think it's down because David Moyes is not in charge. But nah, seriously, I think it's down to the fact that I have belief in this manager, number one. I believe in his philosophy. You know, he's got a proven track record. You know, he's got the uh, players that we need. So, mate, the players I know that we got now aren't going to gel overnight. It's actually going to take months, possibly seasons. It's not going to all happen, you know, in two or three months. So, I think that's why I know... I believe in the coach and the players, and it will take time. So I think I know why. And I know the, the players we got are quality. I believe in them, you know. So I'm not fussed, you know. We, if it would be a different story if we were getting dominated against for 90 minutes and we couldn't even create a chance and we couldn't even, you know, let alone put a chance on, on goal, let alone to score a goal. Then I would be worried. Then I would be like, you know what, we're just shit. And that was exactly what was happening last year. After, uh, under David Moyes. We weren't even creating chances, let alone creating goals. So I was worried about that. Uh, philosophy, um, David Moyes' philosophy was just absolute garbage, and that is the reason why he's gone. Louis Van Hal, you can see the vision. You can see what he's trying to build. It's not his fault our defenders are just having lapses, and every time they have a lapse, the opposition are just scoring. I believe Louis Van Hal will get the defending situation sorted in January, if not even the summer. So I know this is not an overnight fix. We are going to have these defensive lapses. Until then, our results are going to be inconsistent. Just as long we can make top four, I will be happy. And that is why today, lads, I, I kind of expect results like this. And that's why I'm not that upset. But getting to that, uh, to the game, lads, um, Falcao didn't start. You know, playing away from home, I can see why Louis Van Hal wanted to play one striker up front to shore up that midfield, you know, to give cover to the defense. And that didn't happen from the start. Andre Wisdom running down the wing puts in the worst cross you will see all season. Just a terrible mistime hit, which just happened to find Sessignon outside the box, who hit this first time on a cold uh, night in uh, at the Hawthorns. And it's just peached, curled into the top corner, one of the best finishes you will see all season, if you had hit that another 100 times, it would have hit Rose Z, it just happened to be that one time he hit it, and it's just gone into the top corner, fair play to him, fair play to West Brom, they go up 1-0, extremely, extremely unlucky, not the first time we've been extremely unlucky this season as well. But what do you do? But in saying that, lads, that first half, we were dog shit. Not going to, you know, cover it in any other way. We were absolutely pure shite in that first half. But so were West Brom. I don't think West Brom were fantastic either in that first half. Uh, they didn't create any chances. We didn't create any chances. Our only shining light in that first half was Angel Di Maria. Once uh, he went off the pitch, you can really tell, but we'll talk about that later. So half time came, nil all. Um, Herrera went off for us. It looks like he's got an injury. Hopefully he'll be back for the Chelsea game. And Maran Fellaini came on. And when I seen him uh, come on, I was like, oh, God, Louis Van Hal, what are you doing, son? We've got Carrick back. I'd rather Fletcher, Maran Fellaini. Boy, did Maran Fellaini prove us all wrong. He came out and said, right, I'm a man on a mission. Took the game by the scruff of the neck, as they say. What a world he did. Marion Fellaini score. Took the ball down, put it wide, and it went bang to the top corner. Marion Fellaini looked like a world beater when he came on. He was so um, a man on a mission when he came on. He looked like nobody was going to stop him. Every single pass, he, everything he was doing was turning into gold. And I was like, where's this Marion Fellaini been? You know, we've seen David Moyes harping on about Fellaini. Is this the Fellaini that's in training? But, um, 
In saying that, it was just weird how he was starting to dominate, starting creating chances for us, but we, he just seemed to drop deeper and deeper and deeper. I think that's what Louis Van Gaal wanted, which was crazy for me, because you see how much of an impact he was making. The further up he was pitch, uh, the further up the pitch he was, you know, he should have played him off, um, Robert Van Persie, I say. But in saying that, lads, again, dominating the second half. That halftime team talk, I even tweeted it out. So Louis Van Gaal halftime team talk was schmick, you can see it, we were dominating that second half, but a defensive lap from Phil Jones, a lot of people blaming Raphael, I don't blame Raphael whatsoever, Phil Jones had a defensive lap, caught ball watching in the midfield, got dragged, dragged deep, and mate, what a beautiful pass, Berahino, one on one with De Gea, split our defense like a banana, what a finish, I've been praising Berahino for the last few weeks, this kid is going to be something special for England, um, but Phil Jones, what were you playing out there? You left us exposed at the back. You left Royo looking like an idiot. And you left everyone blaming Raphael. When in fact, Phil Jones, it was your fault. You were caught in the midfield. There was no need for you to be diving in there, lad. And you did. 2-1. Back to West Brom. You know, two chances that he had on, on all goal. And they both scored them. Ah, oh, very, very frustrating. But I'm saying that, lads. We came back. We dug deep. Uh, De Maria went off injured, which is sad to see. When I thought when he went off, we just had no wingers whatsoever. Yanazai was having a dog of a game. Ashley Young, when he came on, he didn't really do anything too special. Radamel finally, uh, Falcao finally came on. Um, he didn't do too much, but you can see the impact he had when he came on. Uh, West Brom were just dropping deeper, dropping deeper. I would like to see Falcao come on at halftime, not at the 70th minute mark. But in saying that, he's probably jet lagged. And uh, Daily Blind was the man to step up and just go bang, beautiful finish. Some great goals in this game. Outside the fuck, he was uh, outside the box. He was just cool as a cucumber. Kept that ball, finessed it to the bottom left hand corner. 2-0, and at that point there, lads, I thought we were going to go on and get the winner. Wasn't meant to be. We came so close, Robin Van Percy hitting the post. Unlucky not to, uh, to score himself there. The game ended 2-0. We grabbed a point, and another two points dropped, you must say, but it could have been easily all three points dropped. In saying that, lads, uh, going through each play now, Robin Van Percy so, so isolated up front for that first half. A lot of people... Uh, giving him unfair criticism, uh, in my opinion, because when you're up front alone and you're not even getting any delivery, let alone any good delivery or half-decent delivery, of course you're going to be exposed up front. Unfair criticism to Rob, uh, Robert Van Persie. He should have played up front with uh, Falcao from the start, and you would have seen a couple of calls uh, from the pair of them, in my opinion. One matter exposed again. He looks fine and dandy. You know, in uh, in games where we're playing at Old Trafford and we've got heaps of possession and, you know, we score 4 or 5 nil, it looks fantastic. But we're away to places like the Hawthorne on Monday night, cold, uh, wet places. He just gets exposed and I can see now why Jose Mourinho wanted to get rid of him and wanted to bring in players like Matic ahead of... Uh, one matter. I can really start to see that now. And in my opinion, I, I, I just hate to say this, unless he turned things around, I think he could be at the door as well. I really think uh, Louis Van Gaal is going to use one matter as bait to get some uh, midfield... Um, I'm not too sure what type of midfielder um, Louis Van Gaal wants to get, but one matter... Things aren't looking good for him because the Premier League, you need to run both ways. And unfortunately, one matter, he can only one run, uh, run one way at the minute. Uh, Yanazai had a dog of a game. He just, I don't know what it is with him. I've seen a few under 21 games with Adnan Yanazai. He plays in that number 10 role. He looks so good making these runs, putting his through balls. But when it comes to the senior team, we put him out on the wing and he's just so lost. He's I just, it's just a lack of confidence. If I could give him any advice, it would be Adnan, when you get the ball, lad, and you take on a defender, actually run past him. Put him on his back foot. Yes, he will get you, and you will, won't go past him every single time. You will lose possession. But that one time you do go past him, and you do create a chance, and you do put in a wonderful cross, it could end up as a goal. And when that happens, your confidence will rise. The team's confidence will rise, that defender's confidence will lower, and you will get at him more often than not. But at the minute, you're just waiting for that overlapping run, and you always pass to that overlapping run, or you get on your right foot, which you don't want to take, and you go back on your left, and it's so readable, 
everybody is reading you. Adnan, when you get the ball, lad, run at the defenders. Uh, who else was the Daily Blind was A-OK, -okay, but when he got the finish, lads, I thought he was fantastic in the end. Uh, Di Maria, best player by far. Just a shame that he's injured. Hopefully, he's back against Chelsea. Marin Fellaini, it's the best game I've seen Marouin in a United top ever. Ever. And that's saying something. Uh, Luke Shaw didn't have his greatest game. I didn't think he was overlapping as much um, as he normally does or as a normally left back should. I don't know if that's down to fitness or whatnot, but he just was not overlapping um, De Maria as often as he should be. Raphael was overlapping as he should be, and I thought Raphael played half decent. Yes, he was exposed on the, second, uh, on the second goal. Definitely not his fault. Rojo and Phil Jones, I thought, had decent games. Yes, they were exposed for the goals, and you could possibly say that they were at fault for the two goals, but I thought they both had decent games. Uh, David De Gea, the one player I feel sorry for, you know, it's just not his fault. You know, West Brom have two shots, you know, two goals, and he's, the only two touches he's had with his hands is picking the ball up at the back of the net, and I feel so sorry for him. Uh, Red Amal Falcao, when he came on, he should have started, in my opinion. At least should have came on at half time. You would have seen a bigger impact from him. You could just see every time he gets the ball, he's just going to do something dangerous for the opposition. But, in saying that, Lads, that wasn't meant to be. Another inconsistent night, and I'm expecting that, so I'm not that down on myself. But we're on to Chelsea and City next, and I'm more than confident that we can get a result from both games. You're probably thinking, oh, you know, you're just a wanker, you know, you're not going to get anything. Mate, I feel that we can take any team on in the world when we're attacking. It's defensively where I'm worried. I don't know which day it will be when Manchester United turn up and say, hey, we're not going to concede any more goals at the back. We're going to get it sorted. I think it's going to be a while. I think we're looking at, <laughs> you know, maybe even a season ahead. But until then, we're going to keep conceding shitty goals. We're going to have defensive lap uh, lapses one after another. And I accept that. But I also accept the fact that when we're going forward, we can take on any defense that the Premier League bring, uh, brings at us. It's just a matter of scoring more goals than the opposition. So it's going to be an interesting game against Chelsea. I know Jose Mourinho, they're just going to sit back and just make things so tight and so hard. And possibly, possibly bore the fuck out of us. It's going to make it the worst spectacle you've ever seen. I genuinely believe that. But they might try and hit us on a counter-attack, like what they did to Liverpool last season. So it's going to be interesting. The one thing I do hope for is that we score first. I think if we score first, that is going to be so huge. Uh, that means Chelsea are going to have to go on the break. They're not going to have to be so defensive-minded. They're going to have to go and attack. And uh, who knows, maybe we can expose them at the back. So... If that game is going to be half decent, we have to score first. And I think Jose Mourinho knows that as well. So uh, he's probably not going to do that. Uh, he's probably definitely going to shut up a shot from the start. But anyway, City after that. But um, anyways, lads, that's going to be it for the review of the uh, West Brom game. This is the last review, last video I'm ever going to make in this house. I'm actually moving house. If you didn't see already uh, my vlog video, I'll put the link in the description so you guys can go and see that. But until the next video, lads, which will be in a few days' time, I'm sorry to say, um, I'm your boy, Curtis7. Take care and peace.